So hi, I'm Francis. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a design student in Los Angeles. And this video, I'll give you a tour of my desk and show you some of my favorite accessories and things I made in design school, like those. And later in the video, I'll also show you the coolest thing I've ever made. It's right there. I'll press the bottom and show you how it works. So hope you enjoy it and let's get started. I have always been living with my mom and dog in Taiwan before university. We shared everything in the house, so there was little privacy for me. When I moved to Los Angeles two years ago for school, I was very grateful. I finally, finally had my own space. A space where I could do everything I wanted unbothered and decorated myself. So thanks to my mom for sponsoring my dream and my dog for being cute. There are three things I look for when designing my desk setup. Aesthetics, functionality, and playfulness. I have seen many minimal setups online that looks amazing, but sometimes those setups have a larger space to achieve that, and I don't. I can touch my bed and desk at the same time. That is why I try to focus on what I already have and make it work for me. Also, if we all try to be minimal, then I don't know what is left for us to explore. I want my setup to feel like me, even if it doesn't make sense sometimes. So let's take a look at my desk first. When I moved into the room, it came with this clean and sleek IKEA desk, Mikey. There is some wear and tear from the previous owner, but overall it's great, large and sturdy. Probably stronger than my last relationship. It has two practical drawers. I use the right one to store my essential tech gadgets, SD cards, and items I need to grab and go. On the left side, I put documents, empty notebooks, cotton swabs, and set memories. I don't know why I organized them this way, but somehow my brain wires like that. Before filming this video, I realized that my drawers had become cluttered over time. I have numerous old cables and unused items that are too cheap to throw them away. So I put everything I hadn't used in the past 30 days into an everything storage box. It frees up the drawer space instantly, and the fabric store box also serves as a full rest under my desk, which is quite convenient if you also have short legs like mine. On top of my desk is my laptop and monitor setup. So the main reason I choose a laptop over a desktop is very simple. I can only afford one. Having a laptop gives me the flexibility to work from anywhere I desire. I place it on this large brown desk mat, which complements the overall color scheme of my setup for a cohesive look. As a design student, I always use 3D CAD and other graphic intensive applications. That is why I went with Asus ROG Zephyrus G15. And after two years of use, this laptop is still a beast. If you are curious, it is running RTX 3070 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. It runs Premiere Pro smoothly when editing my YouTube videos, and I can also utilize its GPU to speed up my 3D renders. The variety of ports it has also comes in handy when I have presentation at school. I used to have a strong bias on this kind of gaming laptop because I didn't like how it looked. The glowing RGB lights look like a streak, I mean, nightclub, sorry mom, which hurts my head a little bit. However, after adjusting the keyboard backlights and using it more, I actually quite enjoy it. I use the Logitech MX Method 3 for all of my design work. It has been reliable and feels good in my hand. The build quality is solid with the right amount of weight, so it doesn't feel cheap. The mouse is highly customizable through the user-friendly Logitech interface, allowing me to assign custom shortcuts for specific programs and actions, such as moving the playhead in Premiere Pro with one click, or in Google Chrome, I can click the side button to close tabs, and use the thumb wheel to switch to different tabs easily. And I also like to play with the scroll wheel and watch it spin backward for a while. Kinda reminds me of my school life. For those who also rely on a single laptop for the daily task, external monitor is very crucial to enhance productivity. Having more screen real estate allows me to multitask, speed up my workflow, and visualize my design better. I use a 27-inch ASUS IPS monitor that I got two years ago. 
It is large enough for everything I need with consistent color. It was also the most affordable one back then, so if you're broke, check it out. I often use both monitors together for my Zoom classes and watching online tutorials because I can follow them step by step without missing anything. My only issue with it is that it has a large stand base, which is too big to fit my laptop on my desk. So I made a custom monitor stand to optimize my workspace better. Without a monitor stand, my laptop screen will cover the lower part of the external monitor. Initially, I used three stacks of A4 paper to elevate it, which worked but didn't look good. Plus, I also want some storage. To resolve this, I built a monitor stand using MDF board from my school's recycle bin. With some measuring and 20 minutes of work, I cut and smoothed out the edges using table saw and wood router. And now it works a lot better. I guess this is one benefit of majoring in industrial design. We are broke in style. With this homemade stand, I can now store more accessories in the three compartments below. To bring this MDF stand to life, I put some of my favorite accessories on it to boost my mood. For example, this Pure Night lamp. Originally, I bought it because I thought it was an avocado, and I love avocado. Until recently, I read the label of it and realized it's a pear. Alright, still cute. I can adjust the brightness from the top, and it also has a bouncy belly and a jelly-like feet. I love Next to the pier is my GoPro. It is a great action camera for surfing. It is also the camera I used to start my YouTube channel a year ago. And when I don't surf, I use it as my external webcam for my online classes because the laptop doesn't have one. A few other things to show you. This is the watch I got from my bro's wedding. It has my initials engraved on the back, which is very cool. And my high school pin, a random battery, and more memories. I put an arcade card here just to remind myself that there are still many fun things out there. So go outside and touch some freaking grass. When it comes to organizing small things and displaying my art, a packboard is a game changer because it is highly customizable and accessible. As a student renting a room, I don't want to put any holes in the wall. That's why I made a screwless packboard. It may not be as solid as a screwed one from IKEA because it relies only on a slim connection point at the base, but it still works very well. I display my favorite Heisenberg drawing, a wheel sculpture from my first semester, a powder printed lighthouse I designed in 3D, and a set of stainless steel cheese knife I made myself. And that's not it. There is a little dicky living inside the lighthouse. He is in charge of lighting up the candles for extra dynamic when the girls come over. Well, it never happened. So basically, he's chilling there and living rent free. And lastly, Every industrial designer has a digital caliper for precise measuring and a tape measure. My stock at two inches somehow. Huh. So good morning. It's another morning in Los Angeles. And I realized that I can't show you my setup without showing you how I manage my cables realistically. So let me show it very quick. And if you noticed, I haven't figured it out yet. Currently, I'm using my laptop keyboard as my main keyboard. So the charger and HDMI cable are always visible. To charge my iPad and other accessories, I attach a blinder clip to my monitor stand and put two Type-C cables on it. I also have an extra long cable that goes around my desk to charge my phone on the shelf. You might be wondering that, why don't I get one of those wireless charger stand on my desk so I can see the notifications all the time? And there are two reasons. First, I'm broke. And second, not being able to see my phones all the time is actually a great benefit. I can take a break from the social media world and just focus on whatever I'm doing. And now, let me introduce you to the exciting project I mentioned earlier in the video. It consists of a plant, live strips, a screen, and a bottom, which together made up my YouTube subscriber counter. I designed and coded this project with the help of my instructor. And I must admit that the craftsmanship is terrible because I built a casing in the afternoon before the finals. But anyway, let me show you how it works first. When I plug in the power, it automatically links to my Wi-Fi, fetch my YouTube data, and display my current subscriber account. I even include a sound effect when someone subscribes. Sounds like this. 
So that's pretty cool, right? You can subscribe me now and I will hear it if the codes run smoothly, which you crash most of the time, so let's try it. And there's one more exciting feature I would like to show you. By pressing this button, it opens a new interface with various color panels. Tapping these panels allow me to customize lighting strips color based on my mood and display my favorite plants. So I have a very fun time making this video and I hope you like it as well. When it comes to setting up our own space, I think it's very important to appreciate whatever we have already. Because we can always get what we want. I mean, at least I can. So just use whatever you have and make it work for you. Keep it fun. And if you have any suggestions on my video or anything you like, let me know and I'll make it better in the future. And at the end of the November, early December, I'm going back to Taiwan and I'll go to Japan too. It's gonna be fun. My life right now is like going like this way. After internship, it's going to boom. So if you get it, you get it. Yeah. So thanks for watching and subscribe. See my vlog in the future and have a good day. Bye bye. Oh.